<laughs> Holy shit! Look at all these bales! Are you littering? Yes, I'm, I'm illegal. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to see if we're able to bale that hay that I was unable to get to yesterday. Uh, not quite ready. Um, it's a little damp on the bottom and the wind tore it all up, but it's 3.30 right now. We're not going to bother with it. I got Timothy's going to go rake a bunch of hay that he mowed over at another area. And I'm going to go back to work on the other running gear while Teresa goes and does some other chores that she's got lined up to do. And with that being said, oy, we're just busier than bees, right? Busy bees? You busy bee? You the busy bee? The busy bee, but we're... Yeah, we're back at it. Just bailing hay. Alright, so this is the hay that I uh, was supposed to bale the other day, but had a rainstorm on it. Bales don't look terribly bad. Um, this, these fields were relatively clean fields for the year. Uh, yeah, we got rain and the green started to come up through them and these bit it's actually damp underneath uh, it's pretty dry on the top but it's damp underneath and these bales are weighing somewhere around 1500 pounds which is pretty good weight I'm not pushing the numbers on it I, I mean I'm only at 46 percent and it is running at 50 so that means that it's kind of damp but the, the pressure is in the 900 to a thousand all right, so there's not too much you can break on a crone baler, and that's just a fact. But there is only one shear bolt, and it's for this knotter yoke, and it's broke. It, it won't turn, it won't come out. I don't have vice grips handy, but I, I remember where I have a pair, so I'm going to go steal those. But I want to put my gloves on first because it's in the world's greasiest spot, which I will... Hercules, Hercules. Oh, you're recording my ass. I'm recording your, not just your ass. <clears throat> what are you doing? Kicking some, bro. Shit. Stuck. I'm stuck. There you go, hooray! Not before I got about four pounds of shit down my back. It's okay, we'll get showered together later. Oh, you want to scrub my back? Dirty Asian. <laughs> no, you'd be a clean Asian. You're a fat man. <laughs> hey, for 50, you're not no bad. More. For 50, you ain't bad at all. 50. You are 50. Why are you having a hard time accepting your 50? 50. No, I'm 50. I know you are. <laughs> I'm still pretty vibrant for being old. You're not old. I'm 50, right? That's not old. Just touchy touchy. All right, see you later. That's it. Oh, so exhausting <laughs> for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, that will be it. My ex wife's grandparents. I don't know why the subject came up, and it's just one of those things you don't ever want to talk about. I people. don't think you want to talk about that, yeah. Okay. And somehow, the subject of sex came up, and her grandparents is, ah, we don't, we don't do that anymore. And, um, I don't know which one of them asked, like, well, why not? And, like, her grandmother's just, it's just too sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. That's just one, That's some funny. of those things you cannot unhear. <laughs> See, Too sloppy. That's funny. Too sloppy. Too sloppy. That's no, just too sloppy. There. Return to the earth. Thank you, my love. You're welcome. You need any more tools? No, I actually, I found this. Where? It was clamped. It to, was? Yeah, I, I like, you know, I think I got a pair of ice strips clamping that. What do you call it? The the, the the PTO shield. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And without that, I wouldn't have got that sucker out of there. Thankfully, oh. I had it. All right, let me go home so I could get the... All right, what are we having for supper? Because I feel like I didn't eat lunch. We did not eat lunch. Oh. My mother cooked some stew, I think. Stew? Yeah. I'm going to eat first before you eat. You're not bad for 50. 
I'm, I'm oh. 39, you little I'm 39, you witch. You hear that? See, I call her 50 and it's a big deal. I'm 50 and it's no big deal. Right? Well, I say goodbye to him three times. I don't say goodbye. Until next time, right? How comes your windows up? What are you doing, boy? You feeling okay? Yeah. What are you eating? Orange. You're eating orange. Here, give me kisses. You do feel a little warm. Go home and rest. Love you. Bye bye. All right, so I bit on some ground, county ground, and I've had this ground in the past. Like, I don't know, let's see. 2015, 2016, and 2017, I had hay on these farms up here. Uh, it's quite a ways from the farm, from home, which is fine. I'll, I'll just talk and walk while I'm out here. Uh, it's quite a ways from home. It's like 35 miles from the farm. Uh, the ground is good. The deer problem, the de there's a deer problem. <laughs> So, but the ground is good. Uh, you know, it's not terribly neglected. I didn't neglect it when I had it. I, I used a blend of fertilizers on it when I farmed it. And I lost that property in 2018. So, uh, which took a lot of land out from under me. 205 acres here out of my hands. And... You know, that kind of hurt, but I had picked up some other ground elsewhere to make up for it. And then we did the North Carolina gig for three years, which I miss. You know, I do miss that, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? But anyway, so there's an issue here. Uh, if I put hay back in this, which I will not be putting hay back in this, I will then have to rotate fields that get planted, you know, a plant at all, but there's a certain portion of it that has to be rotated uh, for wildlife, all right? So it's like, well, I could come up here and I could put Timothy in on this whole entire thing and have a decent, wow, somebody did bale that stuff up there, wouldn't you know it? Problem is, it's round baled. It's warm season grass. I'm, gonna, I'm interested now. But we do have a problem with this. Now they got those round bales up there. It's going to be rather interesting as to getting them off of there. But anyway, whatever. But there's, on this farm up here, there's two farm, two fields that you can't do anything with other than mulch hay. Right? So, if you bid on it, you have to be pretty much determined that you're going to come up and do the mulch hay business on it. And, you know, the mulch hay deal. And from the mulch hay deal, you, uh, you know, you're paying the same rate for the mulch hay fields as you are for the cropland. And if you, if you do the cropland and put it into hay ground, then you've got to rotate a certain percentage of it. Like if there's seven fields, three fields, two or three fields has to be rotated. Uh, you can take it this year, you can't take it next year. Uh, then you alternate to another field or another section. So it's really a pain in the ass to do that. I'm rather shocked. This is all redone. When I was doing this ground, this was a big freaking ditch. And it was really hard on the, really hard on the baler to do it. But that's rather shocking. Somebody round bailed it. It is a warm season grass. So it's, you know, not ideal for mulch growers or mulch uh, mushroom growers. Mulch hay, I don't know what the hell they're gonna do with this. I'm just gonna keep walking. Holy shit, look at them all. God, I hope, beyond hope, that they get rid of this stuff. So, with this warm season grass, you cannot cut it too low to the ground. And farmers that, oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Look at all these bales. My good God. Well, all right, let me get back on task. Whoever has these bales here are definitely going to have their hands full getting them off of here. Now, I made hay on this field a couple of times out of the three years that I did. I think I did it for two years. A friend of mine was doing it. And he asked me if he could continue on taking it off, and I agreed that he could. Wow. This is littered. Problem is, these bales probably don't weigh much. But anyway, warm season grass. Warm season grass is uh, very delicate. You cannot cut it too low to the ground. And if you see, they cut these, it's about four inches, three, four inches. When you cut warm season grass close to the ground, it hurts it. And if there's any other invasives that come up, it hurts it. So we do have some invasives coming up. We've got some broadleaf weeds. They'll have to be cleaned out of here. But I'll be up here spraying anyway, so it doesn't much matter when I do this. Uh, quite pleased with what I see, though, for the fact that... There has to be 250 of these things up here. And this field is only 23 acres. But wow. And I don't know. The mushroom barns are going to complain about this. See, this is a problem for the mushroom barns. They don't like weeds. You can get away with a little bit. But you ain't getting away with all these. And this field goes... It's supposed to be 23 acres. I always felt that it was a little more than that. But whatever. That's what it is. I mowed it. I always liked it. It's a fun farm to do. But anyway, so the other fields are corn right now uh, on this property, with the exception of another field up there that they left go. It's got some stones in it, and uh, they're not no tillers, no till farmers. So they came up and they plowed it and worked it. So I got that to deal with. I'm starting from scratch on the regenerative side of it. And uh, yeah, I hurt my elbow today too. So anyway, with the uh, corn, when they take that corn off and they're done here with that corn, they take that off, they are no longer, uh, they're no longer the resident farmer on here. I can come up here and actually spin on uh, rye which I will do, I'll spin on rye onto those fields and get them under cover to start uh, capturing the nitrogen that they have left behind. So I can save some money on my side of it. So with rye, if you're not, if you don't know, with rye, you can capture, you can capture uh, nitrogen with rye. And what it does is it stores it rye and other nutrients, obviously, because it's the mineralization, makes it available uh, nutrients, not soluble nutrients. Soluble nutrients do not become ava available until they've been broken down by some form of microbiology, fungus, and uh, what do you call them? Uh, fungus and, uh, and uh, yeah, microbes, so it becomes available then. So through the rye, get that rye on there, it'll grab that nitrogen, and it'll, it'll sequester minerals from, or available nutrients, make solubles into avail availables, and uh, from there, there's a rat. From there, that rye will get up yay high, and I will plant corn right through it. And that's what I'm going to do. I may put rye and crimson clover in there to see how that works out. So I have more available nitrogen and whatnot. Terminate it with a vertical tillage machine and then plant through and get my herbicide on spray and kill all that stuff. And the biomass, secret sauce it, biomass breaks down, feeds the corn for a lot less money than it would be otherwise and walking and talking is very difficult Whew. yeah so anyways Teresa's up here she's waiting for me she's waiting for me and we'll be all right 
right? Right. It'll be all right. Yeah. So that's an extra 300 and... What do I have? An extra 312 acres for corn this coming year. Not an extra. i got to pay for it, obviously. But... I'll be putting in 312 acres more corn this coming year. So the beans will come off, wheat will go in. I'll put beans where the corn was partially. Partial, I don't, beans cause me a headache as far as deer control and stuff like that. Even though I do have my deer remover. It, uh, it, you know it'll work but I just don't want to have we'll see how the beans go this year we'll just see how the beans go but anyway and if you want to go fishing this is the Crystal Springs section of the Teeter Town Reserve in Hunterdon County New Jersey and you can come up and go fishing hiking uh, I don't care you can probably have sex in the park if you wanted to I don't because I have a house anyway I'm not an exhibitionist, and my wife really doesn't go for that stuff. But there's the corn. Oh, there's the corn there. But there's a piece of land here, which is, I think, about 16 or 18 acres, right? And that 16 or 18 acres, they never mowed it. They never did anything with it. Somebody told me they had a fire up here, and it burned it. And then, because they had a big square baler, like I was doing... You know, they had big pie in the sky, pie in the eyes, pie in the sky ideas that they were going to come up here and put corn and beans and make mulch hay where I had mulch hay and they had problems. So, and the corn doesn't look bad up there either. It looks like he did a minimalist job on it, but quite honestly, uh, it'll be all right. So, I'm shutting up now.